CC Cleaner Malware. Yes, this is a thing. Uh, back in version 5.33, which, you know, that was, I think, the 2017 era of CC Cleaner, it did install Trojans on your system just by downloading it from an uh, actual download site. Uh, hackers actually got on their servers and did this. And it's pretty wild that this even happened because I used CC Cleaner probably 10 or 15 years ago, more of the Windows 7 era, uh, when there's a lot of aspects of this software was actually useful, where nowadays I just view it as bloat or uh, security risk. Uh, I would definitely not install CC Cleaner today, but let's get into actually installing CC Cleaner <laughs> <laughs> on this system, which I don't really care about, and just overviewing the product because it's something that really hasn't changed. And Windows has changed uh, to where you don't need aspects of this product that what used to be amazing. Like uh, this just is overviewing the threat that happened. And there's people even still writing about it five years later of how this kind of uh, happened. And it actually happened in multi-stages from my understanding. It happened more than once. But typically, if you're on CC Cleaner uh, 5.34 and above, you should be okay as far as not having Trojans. But uh, there's other aspects of this I actually wanted to go in today's video. I just want to overview and start off with, wow, this happened. And now let's actually install CC Cleaner. We're gonna install and download the free version, which you can see the upsells and all the stuff that's happening already, like Professional Plus, like what professional install CC Cleaner these days? That's 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 cute. So we're gonna download it. How many how many download screens we got? Okay, finally. You can see it's kind of tailored for your grandpa or grandma. <laughs> In case you didn't know where the download button was. Oh, I hate to do it to this install, but we got to. All right, it's installing, setup complete. It didn't take very long, that's good. And we're gonna run it. All right, it's getting ready for us. Why, Why? what does it need to do? Okay, let's hit continue. All right, now we have an optional offer to install Google Chrome. Let's uh, decline that. I don't wanna install it to Google Chrome and let's start. Okay, health check, this is new. So we have a whole bunch of trackers to remove, some space, over a hundred gigs worth of junk to remove. That's a that's substantial. So what is that? Okay, recycle bin, temporary application files, and that. All right, that sounds good. We also got a banner ad down here as well. Where's the clean button? Okay, make it better. It's gonna patch up the system. All right, it's all done, but we haven't done anything with speed or security. So that's kind of interesting. I would say the one thing about the pro version, it does have four apps to update. Automatic update uh, on this, a way to do this for free, and I'm gonna show you alternatives to actually using this awful product. I, I would say doing just everything through Winget, you can actually do a Winget upgrade and it's gonna do a better job than uh, your CC cleaner. You see the pro version here says it'll update four of my apps that are up to date. But if we do Winget upgrade dash dash all, let's see how many products it finds to upgrade. And you can see here, it's actually upgrading a lot more than just four packages. We have 7-Zip, ShareX, Brave, Git, uh, my Edge Redirector, Notepad++, uh, Visual C++, all these things are getting upgraded automatically through this free software. So this actually free version is better than the pro version of CC Cleaner that you would pay for, and it would upgrade it all. So why would you use a paid version that's worse than something free available? So that's one alternative to update your system. So don't pay them money. That's the big thing here. Uh, let's keep going though. The cleaning version of this is basically removing cookies and these types of things. This is not bad. This is probably the best thing about their software. Not much has changed in this regard over the years. Maybe they updated some of the locations of the cleaning, but for the most part, this being a thing, is fine like this is actually something that is good about cc cleaner now this new performance optimizer i've never seen that what does this do helps improve your pc performance speeds up startup times okay what does this thing oh this always makes me nervous whenever i see something like this let's scan for programs uh Let's see what the recommendations are here. Okay, oh, sad face. Okay, got sad face. Put 15 programs into sleep mode. It's showing 
these things are running in the background, which kind of are needed on some of them. Like OneDrive, I would probably uninstall. Synergy, I, if I put that to sleep, I can't move my mouse cursor to my other PCs. Uh, I could probably get rid of this one running in the background. All these things are kind of going um, and that's something that we could actually address with the startup. Usually there was a startup optimizer over here that you could dive into uh, right here under startup. Y you can see these things are still here. I guess that's just like the automated tool that they can charge for, but using their same tools, you could actually look through and delete things, which this was another aspect of CC Cleaner I used to use, like the Blitz app. I could delete that. Yes. Okay, cool. So that's still viable here. A couple things on scheduled tasks that you're seeing with CC Cleaner is actually adding some tasks in here. So it's like that Star Wars meme, you become the thing that I sought to destroy because it's adding a lot of scheduled tasks. Uh, this is just bypassing UAC, but I think if we look actually in scheduled tasks, it added more. And if we look at our task schedule library, again, like all it's doing is just like ease of use. And yeah, sure enough, look at that. It hides some of the tasks that it created, like the CC Cleaner update. It says, hey, you're not allowed to disable that. So it kind of hides certain things from you uh, from disabling when looking at what you're available here. I, I kind of find it funny that, yeah, <laughs> that that is the case. I'm looking to see if there's anything else in here that it kind of left alone and kind of hid from the user. Um, like AMD link updates not in there. Ryzen Master SDK task is there. The install launcher is not there. Uh, it's just kind of weird how they're picking and choosing things you can disable on your system. For utility, I want to see what I see in task scheduler over here. Uh, but again, they might just try to protect the user from deleting something, but the fact they're saying, hey, we want to make sure we're running in the background. That's that's something that I should <laughs> you should really watch out for. Context menus. This is actually a, another tool that uh, you could actually modify this registry many other different ways. Again, this is more for ease of access. Uh, this can remove some stuff like when you're in File Explorer, like if I pull that up and we go to like a browser and we right click here. The context menu, this is what you see in the context menu. Since it's Windows 11, it kind of hides the context menu by default anyways. But if you wanted to clean this up, it's still there. Again, there's parts of this software that just really have never been updated. And then obviously, Windows services, this is something that, you know, I would not use this probably. Uh, this HP DeskJet was part of that optimization. That's something that I could probably just disable. And then also like Asus update check. And if you want to do that without using CC Cleaner, you just do like services.msc and then kind of look at all of your services. You obviously have a lot more going on here, a lot more chance you might pick a system process and do something bad, but it's still something that I would look at. And if you want a bunch of different ways to actually hit this, you can do control shift escape to pull up task manager, go to startup, and then you can kind of see some of the services that are running in, in other startup aspects that might be draining performance. Another way to access it using built-in Microsoft tools instead of downloading utility like CC Cleaner. A software updater, this is part of the Pro program. Uh, this just kind of shows some ways to update uh, programs, which I already showed the Winget version of that. Uninstall programs. Uh, instead of doing uninstall through here, I would recommend just doing appwiz.cpl. This actually pulls up probably the same thing. This is actually probably a frame from this version. <laughs> from the look of it, it, it looks almost identical to the old version of add and remove. Again, that's just piping kind of what command we see into here. And then we have registry cleaner. Now registry cleaner was kind of interesting. Like back in the old days, you could have programs that would add tons of registries and cause problems. I remember specifically, this kind of shows my age, but, uh, AOL, when you did AOL installs and AOL mail back in XP and even even up to Windows 7 a little bit, there's some people that were using like the traditional AOL mail client and it would bomb out because it was doing so much with the registry and CC Cleaner, Registry Cleaner was really nice back in those days, but this is more than 10 years ago that I'm talking. Registry Cleaner to these days should not be used. I would highly recommend staying away from anything with the Registry Cleaner. I would not run this and if I do, yeah, this just, at this point, 
not something you want to get into. So I highly recommend never running registry cleaner on any piece of software. And then let's get into some of the options here, some of the negative things. Like I already showed some of the task scheduling, but another thing that you gotta really watch out for is monitoring tools, smart cleaning. Well, these are all pro features. And this is actually running in the background all the time. So it's installing a monitoring service that is locked to pro, but it's still getting installed when you install the free version. So I don't know if this is collecting user information, but I definitely wouldn't want this running all the time. And if we look at our tasks and our processes, go to details, you can see here's CC Cleaner. So let's close CC Cleaner. I want all these to go away. So let's close it. And then, oh, see Smart Cleaning enabled. We still have two processes running and see if it completely gets rid of all our CC cleaner. We still have this optimizer service hidden and running in the background. It's only eating up five megs of memory, I guess. So let's say, okay, yes, remove smart cleaning. All that's good. Uh, this optimizer, is there a way to disable optimizer? I don't see any optimizer disable options. Let's make sure that there's not anything we're missing because I want to make sure we exhaust every option. There's nothing in a tray icon, but you see the optimizer service is still there and it is running under the system task. Let's see if what happens if I try to end it. And this is the optimizer service. It did install a brand new service that runs with CC cleaner. And this is something that would need to be disabled too if something like that if you didn't want it automatically starving and kind of what i'm doing here is testing to see how malicious this app really is how egregious is it obviously it's sharing tons of information it's grabbing things about your using and sharing it with its parent company of asked and then they're offering products based on your usage so we're going to relaunch this i see cc cleaner cool it actually is only launching one executable instead of three like it was last time and if we do that oh start the service. So as soon as you click this, it will try and start the service. Since we disabled it specifically through our Windows task, it can't start that service. The update service also is gone. Let's see if that task scheduler still exists because I'd be curious to see. Both of these are still enabled uh, for bypassing UAC and then also the update. Uh, so it's still forcing that update through even though I've gone through and said, hey, don't keep it updated automatically. Don't do notifications when there is a new version back here. So you can see it's triggering. Uh, we can actually see the next runtime. Does it daily at 10 p.m.? So if my computer's on and it also does it and checks for updates at startup, again, this should have been disabled by that check mark, but it never did get disabled. It's obviously still enabled when I look at it through Windows. That's kind of a classification of a very unoptimized app and also potentially malicious in nature because it just adds more bloat to your system. So even with everything's completely stripped out with their feature settings, you're still having more processes running that you need, uh, all just because it deletes some temp files uh, and then you have some ease of access tools here is really the only two benefits you get from CC Cleaner with tons and tons of downside. There's no reason to use CC Cleaner. If you want an alternative for cleaning temp files out, BleachBit is a completely free and open source software that doesn't have any of those trackers and extra processes. You run the program when you want it, you hit clean, and then exit it, and it exits. So BleachBit's amazing for that. As far as checking out all these other things, like uh, the ease of use and those access menus, context menus not really used anymore in Windows 11. Uh, services, you, you're better off just using services MSC. It's much better. And then for startup, you could easily use Task Manager with a shortcut Control-Shift-Escape. Easier to get to, easier to see, and you can disable stuff there. Or you could easily go through registry and other aspects and then uh, for the actual startup, always be checking task scheduler to see what is running because you're going to see a lot more than what CC Cleaner would even show you. Uh, all these things kind of cumbled together means you should never use CC Cleaner in today's environment. But uh, I at least wanted to kind of address it because that's something I used to love this piece of software, but, you know. It being bought out and then not really improved much over the years. And it seems like it's become 
far more detrimental than any of the benefits it gives. So with that said, let me know your thoughts on old CC Cleaner. Is there any uh, anybody out there that's like, hey, I still use CC Cleaner? Let me know down in the comments or you go, no, uh, let me know when you probably stopped using it because that's really where this is. I stopped using CC Cleaner, I think pretty much uh, mid, you know, Windows 7 era. So probably almost 10 years ago now. Uh, but again, yeah, let me know your thoughts on it, and I'll see you in the next one.